Welcome, I'm Andreas Hauptmann, and in this first part of this presentation I will walk you through some technical details on our paper of using deep learning for real-time cardiovascular magnetic resonance imaging. And then in the second part, Vivek Mafarangu will talk you through the clinical aspects of our study. Cardiovascular magnetic resonance imaging is a crucial tool in the diagnosis of congenital heart disease, but it comes with a problem of long acquisition times while the patient needs to hold their breath, which in principle is not a problem if we have a compliant patient, so mostly adult patients who are perfectly capable of holding their breath during examination, and then we get very nice reconstructions. But sadly, that is not the reality for pediatric patients, where we can't tell the children to just hold their breath. So if you want to take data without anesthesia, we get very uh, strong motion artifacts in the reconstructions, and that leads to unusable data. So we need better protocols that are capable of acquiring data without breath holding and in a very rapid acquisition. That leads us then to real-time MRI imaging. In real-time MR imaging, we obtain heavily degraded data. So we need to do more to get good reconstructions. Typically, we're trying to obtain reconstructions by compressed sensing. So that means we're minimizing a penalty function that incorporates ideally spatiotemporal regularization and we get nice reconstructions. So here on the left, we see an image taken during breath hold and from the same patient, um, a reconstruction used compressed sensing. And there's a good agreement of, well, at first of all, image quality, and then also, more importantly, for clinically important values. So we can use this, but it comes with a downside. In particular, it takes long to obtain those reconstructions. So we want to combine this now, our reconstruction techniques, with deep learning to speed this up and still obtain clinically useful reconstructions. And the good part here is, in our, uh, for our study, we have large amounts of stored data, but they're only stored as magnitude images. So we need to work with magnitude images. So we want to recast our problem as a denoising problem that we train now some convolutional neural network to denoise our image to get a nice reconstruction back. So we want to cast this now as a denoising problem. Given our case-based data, we obtain an initial reconstruction by taking the inverse Fourier transform of the zero-field case-based data and get a heavily artifact-corrupted image. Then, on top of that, we want to train a convolutional network that corrects this input image and gives us a nice, clean output. The good part about this approach is that it's very fast. We only need to take one inverse Fourier transform and then apply one convolutional network. And it's possible to train this with magnitude images only. We need to simulate our data to get the noise corrupted images and then we can train with those pairs. The bad part is we need many samples, but since we do have a large data set, that's good for us. But we need to take care that we cast this really as a denoising problem. So it's important to get artifacts that look noise-like. Given our large data set of magnitude images with high temporal resolution, we first simulate our case-based data and then interpolate in time to get a resolution that is similar to what we get from real-time images. Then we can reconstruct the fully sampled case-based data to get a nice reconstructions on this coarser temporal resolution and undersample this case-based data to get our corresponding undersampled reconstructions. Then we cut out the inner part here to have a uniform resolution and use this as training pairs for our network. Here on the right the noise corrupted reconstructions and on the left our ground truth. And then we can cast this as a denoising problem for our convolutional neural network that is implemented with TensorFlow. The network that we're using relies on a so-called unit architecture here in 3D that takes in the spatiotemporal reconstructions 
from undersampled case based data and processes them through this network to create a residual update. So here's an addition. That means the network learns how to remove the artifacts from our input images to produce a nice clean output. To train this, we used our reconstructions from undersampled case based data and minimize the L2 loss to our desired ground truth from fully sampled case based data. Then the training is done for 350 epochs and batches uh, of size 8. And the training takes only 12 hours on one single GPU. And then after the training is performed, we get nice cleaned up reconstructions in space time back. As I mentioned, it's important to cast the problem as a denoising problem. So that means we want to have artifacts that are noise-like, and specifically we want to have them noise-like in the temporal domain. So that means our network learns to um, combine the information from all temporal slices to then denoise the image. For that, the sampling pattern is crucial. For instance, if you take a regular sampling, radial sampling in each temporal slice, we get artifacts that look in time very correlated. And that is not a good input for a network. And if we take still radial sampling but rotate in each temporal slice, we get somewhat more incoherent uh, artifacts in time. On the other hand, we can also use a golden angle sampling, or in this case a tiny golden angle. Here without rotation in the temporal slices, we get again very correlated artifacts in time. And if we rotate our tiny golden angle in each temporal slice, we obtain artifacts that are very incurrent in time and noise-like over the temporal slices. And that's a very good input to our network. If we now look at the reconstructions from the very sampling patterns compared to the reconstruction from fully sampled case based data in the first column, we see first of all that the reconstructions from the non rotating patterns in the second and fourth column are heavily smoothed in time compared to the reconstructions from the rotating patterns in the third and fifth column. This is also reflected in the mean squared error. SIM values for the reconstructions, where we see that the third and fifth column for the rotating patterns now performs the other sampling patterns. If we now look at the reconstructed features, we can see that the non-rotating sampling patterns are not capable of recovering all important structures. And most importantly, the rotating tiny golden angle here outperforms all other sampling strategies. And with this, we will use the rotating tiny golden angle now for the clinical part of the study. In our clinical study, we acquired real-time data using a balanced SSFP sequence with a tiny golden angle radial sampling pattern. The acceleration was 13, which is the same as 14 spokes per frame. The spatial resolution was 1.7 millimeters, and the temporal resolution was 36 milliseconds. We recruited 10 patients with congenital heart disease. The mean age was 33 years, and all patients had the same diagnoses as in the training data set. Specifically, none of the patients had single ventricles. The, the undersampled real-time data was zero-filled, and these images, which you can see here, then underwent machine learning reconstruction, as described by Andreas. The raw data was also reconstructed using compressed sensing, specifically the GRASP algorithm. Both sets of data were then compared to conventional breath hold imaging. 
Here you see the conventional breath hold images in two patients. The top patient has a diagnosis of coarctation of the aorta, and the bottom patient has a diagnosis of pulmonary hypertension. Here you see the compressed sensing reconstruction. Image quality is good, and the majority of artifacts have been removed. However, the reconstruction time is long, 111 seconds. Here, you see the reconstruction of the real-time data using the deep artifact suppression technology that's previously been described. The image quality is excellent, and it actually outperforms compressed sensing. More importantly, the reconstruction times are very short, 22 seconds for all slices. In addition, real-time data reconstructed using either compressed sensing or machine learning allows this type of data to be acquired very quickly with an acquisition time for all slices of 18 seconds compared to 279 seconds. In terms of image quality, it can be seen that the machine learning reconstruction has sharper borders, less blurring and less artifact than the compressed sensing reconstruction. Although image quality is not as good as standard breath hold cine imaging. In addition, the machine learning reconstruction has better agreement with standard breath hold imaging in terms of RV and LV volumes. We have demonstrated that machine learning reconstruction is possible for real-time data. It allows us to combine these fast types of acquisition with fast types of reconstruction we actually see improved image quality in comparison to compressed sensing reconstructions. But the next step is online reconstruction so that it can be performed on the scanner in a seamless way. Also, this type of technology offers interesting possibilities for other modalities, including CT, X-ray angiography, and photoacoustic tomography.